We often talk about interfaith dialogue and people of different faiths talking to one another and coming to common ground. But actually, what seems to be implicitly missed in that is talking to people of no faith. Yes, I, I'm, I'm an atheist. I have no religious faith at all. Um, uh, but of course, I do think morality is important. And uh, talking today, uh, I, was, I wanted to make clear that although I'm liberal in the sense that I want people to think and question and I want to encourage young people in school to think and question about moral values and religion and make, ultimately make their own judgments, um, that doesn't mean that I'm a relativist and that I think that anything goes morally speaking or that every moral position is as good as every other. And people often muddle these two things up um, in a rather dangerous way because they think that if you don't like relativism then you ought to reject a liberal approach to moral and religious education and you need to be more authoritarian, you need to be telling children what they're going to believe uh, and treating them as if they were just passive receptacles um, into which you pour your moral opinions and let them set and they go off and that's them sorted, morally speaking, for the rest of their lives. And I, I actually think that's a rather dangerous thing to do. I think it is very important to get young people to think and question because ultimately each one of us has to make up his or her own mind about whether there's a God or not, which religious faith to follow, if any, which one's true, if any, what moral principles are ultimately right and wrong. And you, you need inner resources, intellectual resources and emotional resources. You need some maturity in order to be able to resist the Pied Pipers who might come along later on, setting themselves up as authority figures, who might then lead you off down some very dark uh, and dangerous path. So let's, let's, let's give kids those inner resources. Let's make sure they're good critical thinkers and they have some immunity to BS and um, you know, some charismatic but potentially dangerous figures that might come along and have a bad influence on them. Okay. And, and implicit within your argument is the idea that people eventually through questioning will come to a good set of values uh, which are overall kind of the, for the net positive good of society. Now, what would you say to those that criticise you and say, OK, well, how do you know they're going to get to the right conclusions? Yeah, well, that is the worry, isn't it? If we just let them make up their own minds, who knows? <laughs> who knows what they're going to end up believing? Uh, and what are we going to do about it? But the, 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 the first thing to remember is that what I'm recommending is freedom of thought and expression, not freedom of action. I'm not suggesting that we should tell kids they can just do whatever they want. Of course not. I'm encouraging them. I mean, I think it's important that kids have rules and boundaries, there's discipline, that we ingrain good habits into them. That's good. But one of the habits we ought to be ingraining in them is to think about their core values, think about them critically, reflect, take responsibility for them, rather than just passively accept what they've been told by somebody as, as the truth. So I haven't entirely answered your question. But that's, that's, that, that's, it seems to me that we need to make that distinction between freedom of action and freedom of thought and expression. It's the freedom of thought and expression that I'm emphasising. Mm -hmm. And then, is it true that we'll all end up with you know, awful, terrible, selfish values if we all are allowed to think for ourselves? Mm -hmm. uh, no, it turns out it's simply not true. There's no evidence for that whatsoever. And in fact, there's been plenty of research done, or at least there's a growing body of research that's been done in schools, looking at, for example, philosophy in the classroom programs where kids are encouraged to think and talk about moral values between themselves and to express their points of view mm -hmm. and to think critically about those points of view and each other's points of view. And it turns out that when you do that in schools, mm -hmm. that, that in, in, there's a measurable increase in their IQ, um, but the ethos of the school also improves. There's less bullying. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a sense of community and cohesion amongst the kids that develops out of that kind of activity. So rather than just abandoning kids to kind of invent their morality from scratch out of nowhere and just don't, let's not even talk about morality mm -hmm. anymore, it mm -hmm. seems to me it's very important that we do talk about morality and we do encourage them to think and reflect about moral issues, um, but that we don't simply give them a list of do's and don'ts, rights and wrongs, and get them to memorise it, and that's their, that's their moral education. That's done, we've taken care of that, let's move on. No, it's, uh, it's, um, it's much more complicated than that. We need to build into them these inner sure, resources. Sure, sure.